Hey folks, it's Stu from Evolution Unleashed, and today we're going to look at a unicorn, that unicorn being Perplexity Labs, and of course, a unicorn being a privately held company that has exceeded 1 billion US dollars in valuation, and Perplexity just achieved that, and it costs you $20 a month for their pro account, and today we're going to dive in and have a look at what makes Perplexity different and sort of answer the question, is this just AI hype? Are these companies just getting pumped up valuations because of AI? And do they really justify kind of the value that they're given? Sort of reminiscent of the dot-com era in the nine, late 90s when the internet took off and online shopping became a thing and all these companies went up in valuation. And then the hype cycle ended and there was a massive crash. Will we see that with AI? Well, history has a tendency to repeat, but... Perplexity may actually be a company that justifies its valuation. And let me show you why. So this is Perplexity, $20 a month. And the biggest difference, of course, folks, is that you can access multiple models. Explain that in a moment, but let's look at the UA functionality, that sort of stuff. So you can go light or dark. The dark's a bit hard to read, the gray is is uh, probably not going to come through on the video very well. So for the purpose of this, light, but I'd usually use dark. Now, here's something cool. You can set the default language for perplexity, perplexity, oh, word salads, and you can have French, German, Japanese, Korean, or Spanish as your default language, aside from just English. So it's already got some cool multilingual functionalities. Um, okay, but here's where it gets funky. Now, from the Perplexity UI, which is what we're looking at here, you can access uh, five models. You can access their Sonar model default, their experimental new model, which is Sonar. I'll explain all those in a moment. GPT-4 Turbo, which basically ChatGPT sits on. Claude 3, the brand new models released by uh, our friends at Anthropic, which have supposedly leaked from GPT. I did a video on that the other day. And you're limited to five Opus answers a day, which is their top model. Not a lot to really push it through its paces, but gives you a little taste. And then there's Mistral, uh, which is a French-based company we'll talk about in a moment. Open source, very cool. But you also get three different image generators. You've got Playground, Dali 3, and Stable Diffusion, which is from Stability, and our friend Emmett Mistuck, who's the CEO there, is, uh, I think, one of the cool little AI companies. And what they're trying to do is take these AI tools, like their models, and fit them onto your mobile phone so you can access and use these AI tools without needing to be connected to the internet, without an account, all that sort of stuff. Very, very cool to think that we'll have AI without needing internet connectivity just on our mobile phones. Anyway, I am being uh, digressed by a tangent. So I want to show you one more thing first before we go and put perplexity through its paces. It's got a very interesting uh, way of functioning, which is different again. I want to show you that. But obviously, the cool thing is you can access all these different models for $20 a month. Now, if you want to use their API and their playground, which is similar, of course, to OpenAI's playground, you have a whole bunch of different models you can select here. So you've got four of the Sonar models, which is Perplexity's own. Uh, large language models, Code Llama from Meta, Mistral, which we'll talk about, Lava, we'll talk about, uh, Gemma, that's Gemini, so you've got the two Gemini products, the, uh, the Ultra and the Pro, uh, that you can access, and you can do all of that, you can access all of those, and you can go straight into Playground and draw direct from those models. That's good, because Perplexity, when you use this one over here, and we're going to do that in a moment, um, does something different, which means you're not getting just a pure output from GPT-4 or Claude 3. There's something else being added in. Talk about that in a moment, but let's just go see who are these people. Mistral is uh, basically a big, big change. It's from a French company. We'll show you them in a moment because they have the Mistral. Mistral, Mistral, easy to get confused. Same company, Mistral, M-I-X, uh, does what it says on the tin. It basically talks to multiple agents and condenses the best answer and gives it to you. So it's a way of uh, making these agents multimodal, multimodal, uh, can talk to different agents. And uh, in my video yesterday, we talked about the danger of AIs talking to each other when they're a thousand times more intelligent than us. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. A bit thought provoking. 
So that's Mistral, and they are part of Mistral, which is a French company. And the good thing about them is they are open source, okay? And they have employees from Meta and Google DeepMind. So, you know, a lot of these people left and made their own company. And Thropic was from the early split, you know, so Claude is from a team of people that split away from OpenAI because they were with Elon Musk. They didn't like the direction that OpenAI were, I, I, the word salad. They didn't like the direction OpenAI were going. Of course, they're now doing exactly the same thing. So go figure, isn't it funny just how easy it is to be idealistic, but how hard it is in real life. Anyway, I digress. This is a $2 billion company. It's probably the leading open source model. It's right up there with uh, the GPTs. So it's a very, very cool model that can do a number of different things. And now with the mixture added in, can pull from all the different models and give you the best answer. We really are entering a new age of AI. Okay, Lava. So who is Lava? Uh, that's a project between Microsoft and the University of Wisconsin. And they're basically trying to make um, an AI with eyes so it can understand the world around it, pretty much like what OpenAI's vision product does. Okay. And then lastly, uh, you got Code Llama, which is from Meta. And the one you can access here in the labs is their 7B Instruct model. Again, very cool because... Uh, Meta have gone open source, which is incredible. And I think a very smart move by Meta. And you can use their code Llama, which is for coders. And uh, from what I'm hearing, it's it's quite good. So whew, let's go play with perplexity. I've got a prompt here. Oh, no, that was explain Mistral. So over here, let me find the document real quick. Copy this. Okay, this is from our ultimate... Um, so organized here. So our ultimate prompt toolkit, okay? This is a free gift that we give. It has a bunch of training on prompt structure. And we're using one of the prompts today. Uh, which one are we using? Uh, we're using the personalized learning prompt. There's an explanation and all of that here. Here's the prompt itself. You can get your hands on that. I'll drop the link in the description or comments below, depending on where you're seeing this video. Hit the subscribe while you're there, please. Helps me out a lot. Uh, but let's run this prompt into perplexity and i'll show you the big difference that this model has over any other model okay um okay but well, we don't want to call it gpt so we'll just call it hello and we want it to be an expert specializing in making cats love us we're gonna have a bit of fun okay so i'm gonna give it two pieces of context we want personalized learning i want to learn it my way that's the advantage of ai folks i talk about this a lot the ability to personalize output you know it's going to disrupt society, but it can do a lot for us too. Oh, easy to get distracted in the AI space. There's so much happening. Anyway, what I'm doing here is aligning this prompt to my learning style. And I want to know how to make my cat love me and enjoy pets from me. And so that's the learning material I want it to make. And my current level is poor. The cat tries to bite me when I go to pet it. It's a black cat with a personality and it only likes me when I feed it. And then just create me some learning material that will help me understand this, make it fun, engaging, ensure it's aligned to my learning styles, et cetera, et cetera. A token override just to push the uh, response into multiple outputs if required. Stops that condensing of responses that you get uh, when they're all trying to save on hardware. Now, here's what perplexity does different. The first thing it does is it asks a question. Okay, so it runs a prompt and it'll ask a question. What type of learning materials do you prefer? So you can tell it that, or you can just skip and get the answer. But then it does something else. So you can see here, it is now searching the web for cat behavior and body language, et cetera, et cetera. So it is running a search function, then takes all that search information, adds that context to my prompt, and then runs the prompt through the chosen model, which in this case is Claude 3, and here it is, right? So it's understanding my cat's personality, creating a safe, predictable environment, um, and so on, using food and play to bond. So actually pretty cool, right? So folks, if you've got a cat that won't love you, uh, I don't, this is just a silly made up example to have a bit of fun, but uh, yeah, this is the power of AI. You can solve any problem now pretty much, or at least get a strategy to solve it. So we'll let that run. So I have to say it's, about similar pace, a bit slow, uh, but it's giving some really cool information. So this is pulling it in from Claude 3's Opus model. Uh, look, we're getting um, 
references. So if you're writing articles or you need references, it's it's backing it up. That'll help you understand whether or not it's hallucinating. I like that. And look, it's saying to be continued, which is pushing into the next thing. So let's just say, uh, please continue and just see what it's got here for us, folks. This is a very long answer to a very simple question, but uh, very, very cool. Uh, what? Uh, let's just skip that. So it's going to do that every time. It's going to ask a question. Sometimes the questions are good. Sometimes they are not. It's a wee bit hit and miss, I've found. But I tell you what, for 20 bucks a month, you get all of this functionality, which you don't get anywhere else. You don't get to try all the different models uh, or the three different image generators. Um, you know, and if it wasn't, if they had custom instructions and stuff like that, like I have with ChatGPT, I might even be a convert uh, full time. But it's a good way to test other models. And when my uh, allocation runs out in GPT-4, I can come here and keep going. Okay, so it's still going. Uh, it's just repeating it. Okay, so obviously it doesn't like my token override. So I'm going to show you the image generation as well. We've got the stability um, image generator to do that. And when that's finished, you'll see it gives you the ability to generate an image based on what it's talking about. So it'll be interesting to see what that comes up with. Logical INTPs understand that earning trust takes time. Okay, so it's really trying to align this to me, which is interesting. All right, end of response. Okay, so see here on the right, generate image. You can search images and it'll find images. You can search videos and it'll bring up YouTube videos and that sort of stuff on this topic. Um, Right, for example, images, there's some images on how to train your cat. Here's some videos that you can watch, but then you can also generate an image and it gives you four styles. Uh, let me close these down. Gosh, we'll have to make it a bit smaller just to see the menu. Uh, you got painting, illustration, so on. Let's do a painting. Okay, just zoom back in. And you can see up here, it's generating us an image. And uh, you can regenerate that. So this is from uh, Stability. Okay, and it's a painting. It looks like a watercolor of some cats. So not very exciting. But hey, it's there. You can do some cool stuff. So folks, that's really just a quick introduction to the unicorn that is Perplexity. Uh, my final thoughts on it really are that it has a lot of uh, extra functionality. I like the fact that it does the search uh, and then uses those search results the problem is a lot of those top search results are just SEO bloated articles that don't say a whole lot. I'm not sure how good that is, but obviously it's got the power of the AI behind it as well to refine it. So you're sort of getting the best of both worlds. And I think that's pretty cool. And uh, for $20 a month, if you're not into the sort of deep prompt engineering levels where you need the custom instructions and some of those advanced functionalities like prompt editing that we have within uh, ChatGPT's UI, then perplexity is a very good option. And I can see why at $20 a month, a lot of people are going there because they can still use effectively chat GPT, but they can use all the other stuff as well. So love to hear your thoughts. Are you using perplexity? Do you think they're worth the $20 a month? What have you found works well? What don't you like about it? And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Just drop them in the comments below. So that's it for the unicorn hunting today, folks. Uh, stay with us. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We've got some cool content coming. And on that note, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.